Hi guys, um, in this I'm going to do the prep work for our class on watercolor portraiture um, and hopefully we'll get to this, we might not be able to, but we're going to be doing a self-portrait using a planar head. Now the importance in watercolors for using a planar head is that sometimes it can be very difficult to figure out where planes shift on the face as a whole, so I find it's quite useful to, to have one of these at hand, or at least to use a photo reference. I'm gonna start by taking a uh, self photograph, a selfie, and turning it to black and white. And then I'm going to, using the flashlight, take a look at the Asaro head, holding the light to where it is in my photograph. And this is going to give me a good guide of where to place the light lightest and darkest values here. I'm going to start by wetting my paper down. And I've made this a little bit darker than the one you'll have in class, so the colors are bleeding a little bit, but that's just so it'll show on the screen. So just wetting this down. And as this dries and becomes a little bit less saturated, I'm going to mix together some skin tones using a piece of paper with a little hole in it as a guide. And so for my skin tones, it's going to be, I'm going to start out with a main mix of just red and brown. And then to cool the tones, I'll move into adding some blues and other colors. So let me just revert this to the original and I'm going to move along and create these colors. So let's get started. So I'm mixing together a little bit of brown and red, then diluting that, placing a swatch of that color there, and seeing if it matches fairly well in the photo. So this matches for a certain area of the photo, but I can tell that there's a lighter area for which I'll add a bit of yellow. Now this yellow is super strong, so you're gonna need to add less of it than um, you do the red and the brown if you're creating a similar skin tone. I'll just try this out for a lighter area. Okay, this will work for some lighter areas. Still need to dilute it a little bit. That's more like it. And then finally, for the darker areas, I'm going to just use that red-brown mixture with a touch of phthalo blue. So let me mix this up. And the blue is very strong here as well, so you don't want it to be too blue heavy if you're making a tint for cooler parts of the skin. And let's just see if that works. I'm actually going to shift that instead of using the phthalo blue because that to me seems a little bit too cool. I'm going to use a bit of purple and this is going to warm that cooler area up a bit. And yes, there I have it. That's a little bit more accurate. Okay, and now starting on the Asaro head, you can either try to impose sort of where the light and shade areas are on your self-portrait or work here. I'm going to just work here using this as a reference because it's a little bit easier doing it that way. And I'm just going to start with a wash of all the second lightest areas. The very lightest areas I'm going to keep completely clear. And you'll note that the eyes have shade as well. trying to limit my brush strokes as much as possible. You never want to be kind of dragging your brush back and forth on the page. So 
sometimes it can be difficult to figure out what the lightest values are and what are the darkest values. And one thing you can do to help with this is simply take a photograph of your reference and on your phone, turn it black and white and enhance the contrast and the exposure. And those will give you more sharply defined areas of light and dark. Now I'm gonna come in with my middle color for the second darkest areas. So I've got some here. Sometimes you need to let your paint dry a little bit so you can come in with another wash because if, you, if the paper is too saturated, the paint will just kind of sit on the surface. And now I'm going to come in with my coolest values. I'll just drop those in because the paper is still pretty wet. So dropping in is where I'm, I'm literally just tapping the brush against the page. I'm waiting a little bit because this paint is going to kind of bleed into the surrounding area. find your, your paint's kind of escaping into areas it shouldn't be, you can try to wrangle it back with a little bit of a tissue. And feel free to generalize these, these areas. You know, you don't need to go like every single section by section. You can group sections together here. For areas that aren't on my reference, I'm just <clears throat> adding in educated guesses. So like the ears, I'm just darkening based on what I understand is probably going to happen in terms of light and dark. Oops, a bit too dark for the chin. Okay, and once you've created something that has a bit of dimension to it, you've experimented with your skin tones, we can start on the self-portrait. <clears throat> For the self-portrait, we're gonna follow the same kind of logic that we did with our line and wash drawing. So I'm going to get a pencil or pen. Let's get the full measurement of this. 
I'm making these marks quite dark so they show up on the screen, but you're going to want to make these as lightly as possible. And now I'm holding off two thirds of the pencil, finding the middle of this, and I'm gonna draw a line down the middle. Okay, so if it's not quite the middle, we can make this just a little bit longer, and there we have this line through the middle. Now I'm going to divide this line into five, so starting with the middle, one, two, three. And I'm going to now create an oval shape around this. Okay, slightly down, so from the hairline, I'm going to divide this into thirds. One, two, and three. And I'm going to plot out where the nose is by coming down from the inner corners of where the eyes are and drawing a ball in the lower third from the eyebrow ridge to the bottom of the nose. I'm gonna put in two circles for eyes and from the center of these, move straight down. And I'm going to divide this section as well into thirds with the center of the lips aligning with the pupils. And then the ears will come around somewhat around here now that they may differ based on your portrait. But now that we have these markers out, we can individualize our faces based on um, our, our own self-portraits. Okay, so now for personalization. So we're not going to get this, you know, completely perfect today. Don't get too obsessed with the small details and trying to make it, you know, too, too much of a likeness because that's a very difficult thing to do and you know it's it's a tall order so don't worry too much if this doesn't look too much like a likeness but i'm going feature by feature and making adjustments based on what i can see in my individual features so you might find that the eyes have slightly different widths if most of our photos are not going to be directly straight no matter how try hard we try to make them so there will be some kind of changes through but just try to make everything match up side to side so tops of eyelids tops of eyelids okay so i have kind of squarish upper eyelids so i'm just going to get that and again i'm making these marks visible for the purpose of this demonstration, but you should be making these marks as softly as possible. You don't want really heavy pencil marks. You wanna make these really, really, really light. And then I'm going to move in. Let's come down to the nose. Moving through the bridge of the nose.
And I can tell here that the sides of the face are a little bit too wide for my reference. And I, I can tell that just by looking at the size of my eye versus the size of the side of the face. And then I can find where the face starts to curve inwards by looking at where my jawline sits in relation to the rest of the photograph. So in this case, it kind of starts to move in around where my nose is on this side. And then on this side, it's also quite, it's more narrow. So I'm kind of moving out here. And I can tell that my ear is going to start coming up around here. There's a little bit of visible ear. So just using really simple, basic shapes. Erasing anything we don't need. A little half a hair coming through here. And now I'm going to actually think about the planes of the face using my Asaro head as a guide. So this is a little bit tricky. And this is just where practice, practice, practice with the planar head, the Asaro head is really useful. But I'm going to have one plane here. Again, make these marks super, super, super light. Kind of a circular dome for the top of my head, moving to the sides. Then I know that the volume of the size of my face is going to kind of follow a pattern like this. And on this side, we're going to get the side plane of the face coming down like this. Coming down like this. And here you can see I need to move my chin kind of inwards a little bit. Okay, so now I have a planar guide to work with for this portrait. I've got some hair in, and I'm just gonna erase this lightly because it's going to be too dark to show any gradients. And this is where using a high H pencil is really beneficial. And I'm going to use a bit of candle wax to plot out some highlights. So let me get that. Okay, now I've got a little bit of wax in my hand and I can see there's a highlight just around the eye, on the top of the nose, coming down the side of the nose, on the side of the lips, side of the jaw and kind of around the ball of the chin, over the top of the ear. And now I'm going to just wet down the page. So I'm going to try and erase this just so that it's visible to me.
And I let, as I let this dry a little bit, I'm gonna mix out some colors. So for this, I can either simply use the colors that I've mixed together here and using my black and white photograph, go dark, lightest, uh, very lightest, or I can do a wash to begin with to look at the tone and then glaze some of the values over. So that's going to be what I'm going to do. And to, for that, I'm gonna make a grayish color, a base color by adding phthalo blue and a little bit of brown and a lot of water. So this is gonna be a really, really light color. And I'm gonna use this to do a base painting that shows the simple light and shade forms on my face. So let's come in. And this is where I need to revert back to kind of using both a sorrow head and photograph to recognize where these forms start and stop. Sometimes you have to kind of make yourself move more quickly than you'd like, or you get kind of confused as to how to generalize the features. So generalization is a very good skill in watercolor portraiture, but one that's very difficult when we're looking at people. mix a little bit of that tone together. And in terms of, you know, kind of moving the paint around, you can just block off sections. I'm kind of moving my brush strokes as I see the volume, just as an additional study. You know, so part of this, learning to paint, learning to draw, is learning how to see. So the more chances you get to kind of study what's going on as you move along, the better. also moving across the painting so you want to kind of get an idea in your head at the rate in which different places are drying. This is one of the most difficult parts of watercolors because it's really predictive and it really depends on a bunch of you know factors. What paper you're using, what the temperature of the room you're in. So just do your best here. And now I'm ready to, let me just actually dark, deepen up some of these tones.
I'm going to convert my photograph back to color and I'm just going to try to wash in different colors. So now, after staring at this so long, when I look at this, I can go, okay, it's more yellowish along this side, it's more red, then it turns more purple. So I'm going to just start experimenting, coming in, washing color over these areas. You might notice that it's a little bit too dull if you simply match the colors, the color mixes to exactly what it would have been directly. So you might need to add a little bit of yellow. You might need to dilute it, add less brown because this is already going to kind of be brown in the colors. So, I mean, you could even probably come in with pure, pure red for some of these areas that are warm. Warm up the red, I'm adding little bits of yellow. And I'm trying to work quite quickly so that I can have as much consistency as possible with how these layers are building up. You can re-wet your paper if it starts to get too dry in areas as you move along. I can see the wax resist taking effect. That's what's blocking off some of these areas of highlights.
where I need to make the tone cooler, I'm just mixing a little bit more blue back in with the colors that I have. The ear tends to like have this kind of reflective, super bright area near the edge. So I'll just get that in. Just realized I need to gray up the values of this eye here. Now I'm going to start moving in with the hair as I leave this to dry for the most part just before I do one thing which is add a little bit of a shape in the nose Mix some ultramarine with that brown to make it even darker. And just kind of gradually add yellow to that. Gonna get some shadow in on the side of the head and the hair. Okay, and now I need to leave this to dry, and once that's dry, I can come in with details. Okay, and now with a smaller brush, I am going to refine some of these details. So I'm just going to go in, and I'll fast forward through this, because this is 
you know, this will take the, the most time. 